All right, guys, okay. Um, I'm basically here to plug things, so I'm just gonna be shamelessly plugging some stuff right now. But yeah, Hacker Days, I think we've all had a play with the Meteor stuff. We've gone through, done many demos in the past, but I've been working on a few little toolkits to basically help myself build applications quicker, um, but obviously releasing those as I've gone through it. So I started this thing called Meteor Kit, which is essentially a bunch of packages that I'm, I'm working on that help me sort of build my tools really, really quickly. Um, and it's more like user interface level stuff. So I don't know if you guys know about base CSS. Hands up, anybody know about this stuff? You heard of Bootstrap? Yeah. Okay. So Bootstrap is like the fully fledged, everything you want, all, com all modules in included, pretty much kitchen sink example if you want to get things done for user interfaces. Um, base CSS is probably my, custom, my current favorite way of laying out things if you want to actually be more modular and object oriented. So it's immutable, it works really well, reactive interfaces. Um, and it means that you sort of write your CSS in a way where you, you build up the classes on the components rather than declaring new CSS declarations every time. Um, so you, you don't pollute your CSS files, because I guess you've all been there where you've created these mammoth user interfaces and then you go back to your CSS file and you can't remember what this thing tallies up to and then when you've refract, um, refactored it, then you've got this like end of CSS slurry at the bottom of things that just does, does not come along with it all. Um, I'd rather build my CSS now in HTML using base CSS and build up my components modularly that way. And that way, um, it, you end up being able to create incredible things like Brent does. So if I show you some of his examples. Um, so he also does some SVG stuff as well. But there's a load of stuff on, the, on his uh, GitHub. He's pretty prolific in terms of releasing lots of open source toolkits. Very helpful for Hack Days. So this is my number one hint. Uh, this stuff will help you get going quickly. He's kind of more of a React user interface designer now as well. So if you uh, are coming into Meteor and thinking about using React, that will be the next step. Um, I'm not going to talk about that today, but I'm starting to get involved in that area as well. It's very interesting. Um, and while we're here and we've had some demos, this is the Skullcat audio demo, which he did for his friend. This is a similar thing. Do you want to drop it? So talking about SVG animation and CSS and transitions. <laughs> and you've got all these dimensions of where you can play with these things. In different bass lines. So yeah. <laughs> but anyway, you can go all night, <laughs> pretty much. But we're not going to do anything that crazy today. But <laughs> you can spend all night playing with this. I'm sure we should video Ollie doing so. I think that would be an amazing <laughs> video with the crazy, crazy colors. And, um, but yeah, so essentially check out my shit because I'm trying to get some more people using it. I think this one has got 2,500 users. I'm not sure who's using this, but that's a simple HTTP or thing to stop people accessing your app. Like, why? Yes. That's not cool. That's why is not cool stuff? Want. Anyway, that's maybe what people want. Um, so moving on, yeah, CSS Next. Um, I've built a, a CSS Next transpiler, which is CSS4. You may have heard about CSS4. Probably not used it much in the browser yet. Some browsers support it, but this is like the way of transpiling from CSS4 into CSS3, but it does it transparently in your uh, pipeline Meteor, so you can create a .css next file. Um, write your CSS4 in your syntax, and eventually when all the browsers support it, you can remove your transpiler and you'll still be able to serve your CSS properties and all that stuff. Um, so there's a package there to help you uh, basically build that. Um, oops, yeah, that's base CSS and CSS Next. And the CSS Next compiler uh, allows you to, it actually exposes an API hook. So if you wish to build extension packages for this, you can. So you can actually, so base CSS is essentially a set of tools um, that is built in CSS4. So anyway, follow that rabbit hole, you'll, you'll be delighted. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to plug some more audio demos because um, basically we've gone down that path now, I think, um, and play around with the old classics. We're kind of, kind of rolling them all out today. So uh, a long time ago, I built this um, application demo Meteor thing uh, called Ableton. Uh, anyone, any musicians in the audience? Any like attempting to be musicians? Anyone like audio? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Good. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, essentially, this is a audio app um, online. Uh, this, is, this allows you to visualize part of the music. So, 
Um, similar colors here, I see we were inspired with the whole, this is it, thinking about it. So this is a live, a meet, a live Meteor app um, on my website. Um, essentially, we can, uh, I've got a partner app, which I'm running locally here. Um, so if I can, so this is like a small Meteor client here, which is registering itself as DDP. So is everyone, anyone familiar with DDP? It's the Meteor protocol thing. So it's a way of distributed data, data protocols. So it's a way of connecting one data source to another and basically streaming the data sources together. So you can have lots of little applications that gossip together and uh, basically reply to each other or subscribe to different sources of data. So the way this works is this one is live on the web. It's dumb. It doesn't do anything. It's just an interface. If I, do, if I boot this one up that's running on my laptop right now, um, you'll see it will go through. It'll do its thing. We'll sit here and watch it fall over and probably, but we'll see. Oh no, it's connected to something. And what does that mean? I'm on. Oh, okay, we've got a stage. So if, if you guys want to help out, um, you can go to this address, abletone.waves.co. Um, so I'm going to mute that for a minute. Uh -huh. But you'll get presented with a, uh, a welcome screen to say, um, yeah, what's your name and what's your player? So basically, one of you guys is going to be part of my uh, live jam tonight. So you're going to form a band, and we're going to play a song right now. Um, so we've got some bass players. We've got some B-licks. Yeah, we're all in. OK, fine. So anyway, going to kill that for a minute. Resolution is sucking, so I can't really do that. But we'll have it overlapping. Um, so th this is not just an audio demo. Um, this actually is a little application that is building. So you can see all the messages coming through. As people pressing the buttons, they, they'll swap in, say, people think, someone, someone died. <laughs> oh, no, someone dropped out. Maybe the Wi-Fi is not working. Um, but I can take control, and I can stop you if I want to. So I'm going to do that for now. But essentially, what this is doing is sending data down to the laptop. The laptop is then uh, converting this, uh, these MIDI signals, um, these signals into MIDI using Node for MIDI, converting those and sending that out to Ableton Live. So if you guys have used Ableton Live in the past, then this is now being controlled by Meteor. So you've hooked, I've hooked it all up together. And then we can now create a live jam using the internet. <laughs> and essentially, if we plug it in. So why don't we just do a song? So we, everyone turn, turn your pieces off. <laughs> turn off your instruments. Instruments down. Or I'll turn you off. Who's on vocals? St Sting's on vocals here. I don't know who Sting is. <laughs> Someone's got a horn. All right, get some drums in. Oh, there you go. OK, I'm going to record it anyway. So we can go through and start recording this. And then in the past, the background, we can go through it. So we keep drums out. So it's all quantized. So once it's plugged in, it'll just play through. Um, but essentially, it's bits. So if I drop the drums out, I've lost my mouse. Hang on. But then I've got this, this extra part which I want to bring in because we've got a special guest with you tonight, which is. <laughs> Bit of rig actually. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I think we made a hit there, don't you? Uh, yeah, a little bit of a clashy. Why not? You're all being rickrolled. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>